Hello, I'm Chrissy Dunn. Thank you for downloading this podcast of Desert Island Discs from BBC Radio 4. To save money, the music choices are shorter than on the radio broadcast. For more information about the programme, please visit bbc.co.uk slash radio4. My castaway this week is known to most of us in the UK as Father Christmas. But who is he? His origins are very much open to debate. A composite figure who's been drawn from a variety of influences and shaped by an array of differing cultures. A cloak-wearing druid. A Dutchman, St. Nicholas, who went to America and returned to Europe as Santa Claus. Add to these hallucinogenic mushrooms, tales of young damsels without a dowry, an 1832 poem by Major Henry Livingston Jr., and perhaps even a sprinkle of Coca-Cola, and we arrive at today's castaway. Father Christmas, welcome. Thank you, Chrissy. Can you see someone you recognise in that description? Well, yes, to an extent. John Lennon once got himself into seriously hot water by saying that the Beatles were more famous than Jesus Christ. The fruits of your labour, some might say, collide head-on with Jesus' birthday. Do you think that you, Father Christmas, are more famous than Jesus? Well, Chrissy, I think the answer to that has to be an unapologetic yes. An old man dying and a young child being born after the solstice were symbolic of natural regeneration. The Christians appropriated the idea and the date to weave their way into a pre-existing festival. These days, I think you'll find that it's only in the very remotest of backwaters, places like Bexley Heath... Wolverhampton or Ohio, where you'll find more people having heard of Jesus than me. Father Christmas, let's have some music. What are we going to hear first? Well, this first song for me sums up what it's like on Christmas Eve. Long passages of peacefulness, the night air bristling with expectation, all broken up by sudden bursts of frantic activity as we move on in with embassy siege-like precision, dropping off our parcels unseen and unheard. Santa McNabb, my wife sometimes calls me. Father Christmas, do you really know when people have been sleeping and when they're awake? Of course. And when they've been bad or good? I do. Will I be getting any presents this year? Are you flirting with me, Chrissy? so still Be up there with the song It's Oh So Quiet So Father Christmas, seeing you in the flesh you're a big man, but you're out of shape How come? Very simple, Chrissy Cakes and ale Father Christmas, I sometimes feel the need to let the listeners know what my castaways are wearing but with you there's no such need You are your clothes But how did the red coat and the pointy hat come about? Well, yes, that's the red and white fly agaric mushrooms and the custom of feeding them to reindeer and collecting their urine to drink. The reindeer's digestive system metabolizes the more poisonous components of the toadstool, leaving the urine with the hallucinogenic and psychotropic elements of the fungus intact. Under the hallucinatory effects of drinking the reindeer's whittle, people imagined that the reindeer were flying through space, looking down on the world, dripping the light fantastic, Chrissy. Fascinating. That reminds me of my university years. What's your second piece of music? This next track was played at my wedding as Mary, my soon wife-to-be, walked down the aisle. Eighty-eight elfin bridesmaids with miniature samurai swords and the most beautiful woman I had ever seen in my life. It's like a jungle sometimes. It makes me wonder how I keep from going under. It's like a jungle sometimes. It makes me wonder how I keep from going under. Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five featuring Melly Mel and Duke Booty with a song called The Message. So, Father Christmas, how did you meet your wife, Mary? I met her at an elf bowling alley. When I was younger and needed a bit of relaxation, I would head off to the elf bowl. One day, I found myself in a lane next to Mary. It was love at first sight. You might say that you were bowled over 
You're better than that, Chrissy. You're right. Thank you, Father Christmas. So, marriage. And did the patter of tiny feet follow? No, they didn't. A question I had to ask myself was, could I deliver presents to my own offspring? Well, yes, quite easily, you might think. But it's more complicated. It's a question of belief. As Father Christmas, I know that every child's belief in me must one day come to an end. It's a guarantee that those loving smiles will turn to derisive sneers. But you see, I must never show that I know that. I must never play the ending. I give 100% from my side until that relationship snaps like a twig underfoot and is over. I could never have children of my own because I couldn't bear to see them stop believing in me and my entire life being exposed as a hollow charade. What's your next piece of music? Well, Chrissy, this next piece takes me back to my sexual awakening and losing my innocence to a most extraordinary woman of the woods. She introduced me to what the Laplanders call Tuella Sigargadir, a kind of sexual hide-and-seek. I would chase her through the forests, the pine trees, the deep snow at night lit only by the moon. She would call out to me, I'm here, come and catch me, and so forth. And when I found her, she would clutch me by the hair with both hands and plunge my head towards her. And then when she was on the verge, she would toss my head aside and run off again into the woods. This would go on for many hours. This next track reminds me of those wonderful times. <laughs> Cecilia Bartoli singing Il Trionfo del Tiempo El del Disingano and Pensiero Nemico di Paci from Handel's opera Probati, reminding my guest today of lally licking sessions in the Laplandic woods. Father Christmas, how do you let your hair down these days? Oh, you know, the usual ways vodka, base jumping, extreme embroidery, going to gigs. Now tell me, Father Christmas, on Christmas Eve, just before you set off on your sleigh, do you and Mary put out a stocking for each other? Is she allowed to put one or two things inside so that even you can experience what it's like to open a present? No, we don't do stockings. We don't do presents, to be honest. The last thing I feel like seeing on Christmas Day is a frigging present. She's not bothered either. I stick 40 quid in her purse and she's happy. Really? Yes, really. Now don't try to make me feel bad about it. I'm not. Yes, you are. Cheeky. Father Christmas, track number four. Well, my fourth choice is a song Mary and I sing together. Sometimes first thing in the morning, sometimes on a walk, sometimes in the bath. But whenever she starts, I join in. The colours of my life The colours of my life Are softer than a breeze Bountiful and bold, the purple glow of the silver gray of the the gleam of green. Deborah Grant and Michael Crawford singing The Colors of My Life from the original cast recording of Barnum. Now, Father Christmas, I can see that that song has made you cry. I love her, that's why. She'd have been a wonderful mother. (laughs) 